Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I am driving the 2015 Mercedes-Benz GLA 45 AMG and I'm calling this the rich man Subaru STI and the reason I'm doing that is because there's quite a few similarities between the two cars. Now I drive a 2014 Subaru WRX or STI, it's the hatchback version, uh, the better version which they unfortunately don't sell anymore. And so this is the Mercedes GLA 45 and there's so many similarities between them and the reason I bought uh, the WRX STI was because I wanted something that was practical, that's why I got a hatchback, it has plenty of cargo space. I wanted something with all-wheel drive so I could go up to the mountain and not worry about traction uh, as I've got some snow tires on it and it's got limited slip diffs front and rear, it's got all kinds of traction. Uh, and I wanted something that was fun, so it's got you know, a four-cylinder turbocharged engine, 300 horsepower, it's a very fun car to drive. And so, you know, it was kind of the complete package than that. It did everything. It also has a good amount of ground clearance, so you can go, you know, pretty much anywhere with it. And this is basically Mercedes' version of that. And when I think to myself, if I had the money, if I could afford it, which would I pick? Uh, and I really do think I would probably pick this Mercedes over it. Now, it starts at 48000 uh, so that's not that much higher than the Subaru STI that I bought, which started at 37000 for the hatchback version, uh, which they don't make anymore, and now it starts a little bit less than that, but regardless, that was its starting price, so about $12,000, $11,000 difference between the two. Now, let's talk about similarities. Mercedes calls this an SUV, uh, and I'm not sure why, because it's basically identical to the Subaru WRX hatchback in every dimension. It's 30 millimeters longer in length, and it's less than 10 millimeters different in width and height. It's a little bit wider and it's a little bit taller, but aside from that, it's basically the exact same dimensions as the hatchback WRX STI. And so, you know, it's pretty much a hatchback. That's what it is. Whether or not they want to call it that, that's what it is. Uh, and the other thing is the WRX STI actually has more ground clearance, 5.9 inches versus this has 4.8. And so, you know, from that sense, the WRX is actually a little bit more practical because you can go a little bit more uh, off-road with it. Now let's talk about the engine. Both of them have four cylinder turbocharged engines. This one has 355 horsepower, so 50 more horsepower than the WRX STI. And it also has quite a bit more torque, 332 pound-feet uh, versus 290, so 42 more pound-feet of torque. So it's a very powerful engine in this, and it only weighs 80 pounds more than the STI. So that's pretty cool, you know, they kept the weight down in this, and I admire them for doing that. Another big difference is this has a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. And while I personally prefer a six-speed manual transmission, which is what the STI offers, I can admire how good of a transmission this is. It shifts really quickly, uh, very quickly, very smooth, and the downshifts are phenomenal. The rev match, you know, you're, you're hammering into a corner and you can just blip the throttle down. It sounds phenomenal, uh, so it's just a really, really good transmission. And I can admire that, you know, from a technological standpoint, it's definitely more advanced than a manual transmission. So just another point that this has, you know, up on the WRX STI. But I have several major complaints about my STI, and this kind of addresses all of those. Uh, the first one is, you know, the interior of the WRX is a bit cheap. Uh, everybody knows that. And so, you know, with this, you have a much nicer interior. With the STI, uh, you also have, you know, the problem of cabin noise is pretty loud. And although the cabin noise in this isn't actually much better, it is a little bit better and it's not quite as harsh. So I have to give it credit. It's a couple decibels less on the highway uh, in my testing. So it is a bit quieter of an interior. Also, the sound system in my STI, not very good. Um, in fact, I would, I would say it was bad rather than just not very good. I, I actually legitimately don't think it's good at all. Uh, and so the sound system in this is actually phenomenal. It has a Harman Kardon system and it sounds wonderful. So I really, really like the sound system in this. Now, my final complaint, and people say I'm crazy when I say this, is about fuel economy. So the WRX is rated, the STI is rated 17 in the city, 23 on the highway. And I complain about that. I think that's ridiculous. I think in this day and age, we shouldn't have cars that are getting that terrible of fuel economy. And people say, oh, that's crazy. You know, it's got 300 horsepower. It's all wheel drive. It makes sense that it gets terrible fuel economy. And it's like, okay, does it? This car, uh, it's heavier. It has 50 more horsepower. Uh, and it gets, and it's also all wheel drive, but it can switch to just front 
front wheel drive. It's rated 23 in the city versus my Subaru, which is rated 23 on the highway. It's rated 29 on the highway. So you actually get pretty decent fuel economy out of this. And with the STI, you do not. So it really does do it all. You know, I bought the STI because I wanted a car that could do everything. Uh, and I have a few complaints about it. And this car pretty much addresses all of those complaints, which is pretty phenomenal. So I have to give Mercedes credit. This car is right up my alley. It's exactly what I'm interested in. And they've really nailed it. Uh, pretty much just took the STI, made it a better car, made it a luxury car, made it a rich man's STI, and I think they did a great job of it. So now let's go have a little bit of fun. So coming up to some corners here where we really let this thing shine, two quick downshifts, little crackle, power our way through. bit of sliding there. Coming into this corner hard. Just unbelievable grip and power. This thing accelerates so quickly out of these corners. Now I wouldn't say that the AMG has all of the advantages. There are a few things that I do like a little bit more about the Subaru. Uh, first of all, it does have the ability to bias more power towards the rear than the Mercedes does. The Mercedes is a topping out at 50-50 torque split, whereas the Subaru can send about 65% to the rear, so that's one advantage. It also does weigh slightly less, so you have to give it credit, you know, about 80 pounds less, but the Mercedes offers a lot more for those 80 pounds, so, you know, it's really not that huge of an advantage. And then finally, it does come with the manual transmission. So if you're trying to have the most fun, I think the manual transmission is the way to go and the Subaru does offer that. So you gotta give it credit for that as well. That said, this transmission in this Mercedes is very good. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in manual mode and come up to some corners. The downshifting is just very quick. You know, you're on the brakes and it rev matches as you press down on it. Nice crackle in the exhaust. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.